Hello, and welcome to the PC America Reseller Training Series. My name is Adam Moore, and I'm the PC America Sales Engineer that will be conducting today's training. My role is to help the reseller and bar community better understand the features and functionality of the PC America Point of Sale software. Today we're going to be discussing the pizza setup. Let's get started. When you first click on the software, this brings you into your login screen. On your login screen, you have Manager, Help, and Exit. Manager allows you to make any kind of changes or back office adjustments that need to be made in the software. Help stores all of our FAQ knowledge, so if you're struggling with any aspect of the software, you can refer to the Help menu. Exit allows you to exit out of the software. Below these three options, we have ways of sending any kind of pictures, brands, or logos to your liking. That is done in your display setup. Display setup also allows you to configure the background of your screen, such as the color and the font. Let's click on Manager now and show you how to make those changes. When you click on Manager, you're prompted for a password, and by default, that password is admin on the top and 01 at the bottom. Now we're going to click on Setup number 4, Display Setup, letter E. So as you can see, I have my background set in red and my font set in black. And I also have the logo selected at the bottom here, which is showing in the background. Again, this is your display setup. Below where you can set any kind of picture, brand, or logo, you have two methods of clocking into the software. Both methods are secure. One method is with a unique identifier that you have assigned to the employee, and the other method is with an access card or swipe card. If you're interested in purchasing access card or swipe cards, you can contact your account manager. To the left here, we have a number pad, and this is the number pad that we use to log into the software. By default, the ID is 01, and the password is admin. Let's log into the software now. After you log into the software, this brings you into your table layout. At the top of the screen, you'll notice a couple tabs. We have Edit Layout, Options, Takeout, Delivery, and Quick Tab. Quick Tab is the most fastest and efficient way of getting into your menu screen. Delivery and Takeout are your most common order types that are used in the pizzeria environment. Options is the same as your manager screen. This allows you to make any kind of adjustments or back office adjustments that need to be made in the software. Edit Layout will allow you to edit the entire layout of your establishment. You'll notice at the bottom of the screen I have two sections created, dining room and front counter. When I select front counter, the entire layout will change. Edit layout will allow you to create multiple sections at the bottom of the screen and then set up those different tables for those sections. Let's hit edit layout now. By default, the password is admin, A-D-M-I-N. You'll notice that the table layout is now opened up. You'll also notice at the top of the screen, we have the ability to add multiple sections, multiple tables, and multiple objects at once. You'll also notice when you highlight a table, you now have the ability to set the number of seating per table. The system also allows you to create profit centers so you can see which section of your establishment is most profitable. Next tab we're going to move on to is going to be your takeout tab. Takeout will allow you to select new and create a takeout order for a customer that's picking up their order. So let's hit new now. Let's enter the customer's name. Let's say his name is Adam. And this brings us directly into our menu screen. Now let's select our pizza department and ring a pizza through. So Adam is going to get a plain cheese pizza. We're going to just leave that plain, so we're going to hit done. And now we're going to hit send. Now let's say the customer has now come to the location and to pick up his order. We're now going to hit takeout, select Adam, and now pay out his order as we would. So now we're going to hit pay, hit cash, whatever his payment method is going to be, and finalize the transaction. After the transaction is finalized, this will kick you back out to your table layout. Would you like to print a receipt? I'm going to say no for now. So now when we go back to the takeout, the order is now gone.
Now the next tab we're going to talk about is going to be our delivery tab. On your delivery tab, you have the ability to select customers that already exist in your software or add new customers on the fly. <clears throat> when you hit add customer, this will bring you directly into your customer maintenance. Let's select a customer now and show you how a delivery order works. So as you can see, we selected Adam Mora at the bottom of the screen here. And now we can ring our order through. So let's select a pizza. And let's select a plain cheese. <clears throat> like I said, we're going to leave this at plain cheese. So let's hit done. And now let's hit send. You'll notice when we hit send, it's going to give us a time promised of when this order should be delivered. So now let's hit send. And as you can see, it always defaults an hour ahead. It's currently 4.30 right now. <clears throat> and it's showing 5.30 p.m. So we're going to leave it just like that, 5.30 p.m. Now the order has been sent. Now when we go back into the delivery tab, we now have our order sitting here. <clears throat> At this point, we can now go into delivery tracking because now we have the ability to send our orders and assign them to different drivers. Delivery tracking and this is what the screen will look like. It shows you the order that has currently been sent to the kitchen and at the top of the screen is how you can manipulate the order that is currently being sent. At the bottom of the screen you'll have the ability to dispatch the driver and it'll show you the drivers that are out for deliveries. Next tab we're going to talk about is going to be QuickTab. QuickTab again is your most fastest and efficient way of getting into your menu screen. Now that we've logged into our menu screen, let's give you a breakdown on how this screen works. On the left here we have our departments and on the right we have our items. You also have a cursor which follows you around so you know which department you're currently in. At the bottom of the screen we have hot buttons. There's over 16 buttons that can occupy the screen but over 45 different functionalities that you can set for these buttons. That is done in your touchscreen configuration. Touchscreen configuration also allows you to color code your departments and items, rearrange your items in any order that you would like, and also hide any buttons or departments that you do not want to show on screen. You also have the ability to set pictures for these buttons as well. And again, that is done in touchscreen configuration. To the right of these hot buttons, we also have Lookup Customer, Check, Edits, Send, and Pay. Lookup Customer will allow you to pull up any customers that you are tracking in the software. The software has the ability to work with loyalty programs and gift cards. For gift cards and loyalty, the software does not require a processor. It only requires a processor when you have more than one location. Reason being is if you have more than one location, you want all of your points and gift cards to be global on all locations. That is why a processor is required. Next to that we have edits. Edits allows us to manipulate the order that is currently being rung up in our invoice list. Below edits we have send. Send will send the order to the designated printer. You can have multiple order type printers set in the system. So this will send the item to the designated printer that's associated with that printer. Check will print out a receipt so the customer can see what is currently being rung up. This will also send the order to the kitchen if it has not been yet sent. And the last button that we have here is our pay button. Our pay button will bring you directly into your amount tender screen. In order to get to your amount tender screen, you must have an item rung up first in order to finalize that transaction. So let's go into our pizza department and ring a pizza in with no topping. So this way we can ring the sale in very quickly. So let's go to navigate to our pizza department. Select plain cheese without a topping. I'm just going to select done and now I'll hit pay. As soon as I hit pay this will bring me directly into my amount tender screen. At the bottom of the screen we have our common dollar amounts. Last amount always rounds up to the nearest dollar. In the middle here we have all the tenders that you would accept in your software. To finalize the sale for exact amount you can just hit cash and that will close out the sale for exact amount. Let's do that now. Hit OK. Would you like to print a receipt? I'm going to say no for now. And as you can see, this brings you back out to your table layout, so now you can ring your next order in. 
So now that we've gone through all the different order types and broken down the menu screen, the next logical step is how do we program these pizzas into the software? So let's navigate to our quick tab and show you what I mean. So in our pizza department, these pizzas here need to be programmed. So now let's walk you through on how to program these individual pizzas into the software. So now we're going to click on manager and now we'll navigate to number five administrative letter B department maintenance. The reason why I navigated the department maintenance first is because we want to make sure that we have departments created for our pizzas and our pizza toppings. Let's hit our lookup button here. Lookup is your most fastest and efficient way of pulling up all of your departments added into the software. Previous and next are your slowest ways of navigating to those departments. So as you can see I already have my pizza department created and I also have my pizza topping department created also. So now I can start creating my pizzas into the software. So let's cancel this and let's exit out of here. And now let's navigate to letter A, inventory maintenance, which is right next door to letter B, department maintenance. At the top of the screen here, we have pizza setup. This is what we need to use to program our pizzas into the software. So now that we're in the pizza screen setup, let's walk you through and how to create some pizzas in the system. But first, let's break down the screen so you get a better understanding. The left section here is all of the pizzas that we currently have added into the system. The middle section here is the general information that is required when adding a pizza into the system. The bottom section here is our price matrix. This is where we can set our price for our crust and the size of our pizza. We also have the ability to point the pizzas to designated order printers. Extra info allows you to set your tax. You also notice that you have plus and minus signs here. This plus sign is to add a pizza in, and the minus sign is to delete the pizza out of the system. You'll see toppings, sizes, and crust. I like to work from left to right, so I like to create my toppings first, my sizes, then my crust. Now, let's create a pizza into the system. And the type of pizza we're going to create is going to be a buffalo chicken pizza. The buffalo chicken is going to be a default topping on that pizza, so there's not going to be an additional charge for that topping. So let's do that first. Like I said, I like to work from left to right, so let's create our toppings first. Now you'll notice you have a plus sign and a minus sign. Again, this allows you to add the topping in, and this allows you to delete the topping out of the system. Let's hit the plus sign now. And now let's select our department called Pizza Topping. And we'll create a new topping called Buffalo Chicken. You'll notice I didn't change the item number. I let the software create the item number for me. You never want to adjust this number. So only fields that you're filling in is going to be the item name, short description, and the department. Now, let's hit save at the bottom of the screen. Next, let's click on exit to create our default size for our buffalo chicken pizza. Now we're going to click on sizes to create our default size for our buffalo chicken. And we're going to hit our plus sign. Next, I will select the department for my pizza size, which is going to be my pizza toppings. Again, the pizza toppings will not show on screen. This is pretty much where all your back end work is going to be saved. For the next size, we're going to call this large. Large will be the default size for our buffalo chicken pizza. You also have the ability to set a default topping. For now, we're going to leave it at zero. Now let's hit save. Now we can exit out of here and create our crust for our buffalo chicken pizza. So let's exit out of here and now click on crust. The crust that we're going to create for our default pizza will be thin crust. So let's hit the plus sign again. Select a department pizza topping. And we're going to create our item number thin crust. You'll notice that I did not change the item number. The software automatically created that. 
and I did not adjust it. The only fields that I entered was the thin crust and the thin crust for the short description. And I also set the department for our crust size. Now I'm going to hit save. So now that we've added our toppings, sizes, and crust into the software, now we need to add our buffalo chicken pizza that's going to be using those toppings, sizes, and crust. So now let's exit out of our crust setup and hit the plus sign on the lower left here to add our buffalo chicken pie into the software. Now we're going to type in buffalo chicken for the item name. And for the default size, we created uh, large. For the default crust, we created thin crust. And the department where all of our pizzas are stored, we want to make sure we select pizza. At the bottom of the screen, you'll notice that we have a matrix now. We have our crust and we have our size. We must now set our pricing for our different sizes of our pizza. The next tab that we have here is our kitchen display. This is where we come to point the item to the printer or bump bar. Extra info will allow you to charge tax for your pizza. You'll also have the, the ability to print delivery labels if need be if you are delivering your pizza. Let's click on pizza prices and add all of our pricing for our buffalo chicken pie. So here for the first one, let's make this eight dollars. Next one will be ten dollars. The next one will be 12 and the last one here will be 14. Let's move on to our garlic herb and we'll make this the same price. Doesn't matter. Just show you how it works. And for our stuffed crust, maybe we'll increase the price a little. We'll go $10, $12, $14, $15, and maybe for the thin crust, we'll do uh, nine dollars, and we'll do twelve dollars, fourteen dollars, and sixteen. Now we're going to hit save. Now let's set the topping for buffalo chicken pie, which is going to be buffalo chicken. So now we're going to hit edit, then set up this pizza's toppings. We're going to select buffalo chicken because that is the default topping for the buffalo chicken pie. Now we're going to hit save. Now we'll hit save one more time to commit all of our changes. So now that we've created our buffalo chicken pie, we can now exit out of here and ring up our pizza. So let's do that now. Exit. Exit out of our inventory maintenance screen exit out of our manager screen and now let's log into the software by default our ID is 01 and the password is admin A-D-M-I-N now let's hit quick tab because quick tab is our most fastest and efficient way of getting into our menu screen now we're going to select pizza and there's our buffalo chicken pie let's click on that now this should bring us directly into our pizza screen Now to give you a quick little breakdown of this screen, you'll notice at the top we have pizza size and the default size we set for our buffalo chicken was large. You still have the ability to change the size if you would like. Same thing with the pizza crust. We have our default pizza crust set to thin crust. You still have the ability to select multiple crust as you see here. You'll notice that the price decreases and increases as you select the crust. You now have the ability to also select multiple toppings either on the left half or on the right half. You can select the left half, that shows that it has a left half selected, and now select your toppings accordingly. You'll notice that the price will increase as you add toppings to the pizza. Now let's say I want to add a couple toppings to the right side. Let's do bacon and some spicy sausage. Now we can hit done. This now shows you that we have our buffalo chicken with a large, thin crust. On the left side we have onions, 
On the left side we also have peppers, and on the right side we have bacon and spicy sausage. Now we can pay the transaction out as we would. So let's hit pay, and then cash to finalize the transaction for exact amount. Let's hit OK to that. And now the sale is complete. Would I like to print a receipt? I'm going to hit no for that. So now this kicks us out back into our table layout screen. So now that we've gone through the different order types, broken down all screens, walked you through on how to add a pizza into the system, completed sales from beginning to end, the next logical step would be how do we add employees into the system that can ring these orders through? Now let's navigate to our option screen or our manager screen. Number five, administrative. Letter F, employee maintenance. Now this will be the screen where you add all of your employees into the system. This is where you can lock them down of what they can and what they can't do in the software. Let's give you a little breakdown of this screen. The talk section is the general information that is required for an employee. The middle section is where we set the permissions of what they can and what they can't do in the software. The bottom section is how we navigate and add our employees into the system. So now let's hit add employee at the bottom of the screen and add a new employee into the software. So now add employee, type in our employee ID which is going to be 1234 and we're also going to make the password 1234 so we can log in and out very easily. So 1234 and the display name we're going to give it Adam. Now I also have the ability to make uh, a card swipe for this employee so they can swipe into the software. As I mentioned in the beginning of the software, you have two secure methods of logging into the software, either with a swipe card or with a unique identifier, which is why, what I assigned to this employee here. Next, you have a couple tabs in the middle of the screen here. You have permissions. This is where we can set all the permissions of what they can and what they can't do. You must make sure that you go through all of these permissions. You also notice when you hit this drop down arrow, you have yes, no, prompt, and override. Yes means they can do the functionality. No means they cannot do the functionality. Prompt requires a manager access to do this functionality. And override gives you manager access throughout the software. If you are uncertain what a functionality does here, then you can highlight it, and it gives you a brief description of what that functionality details. You also have the ability to track every functionality that you give to your employees. So even if you have open cash or set to yes, you'll still have the ability to log as exception. This will throw this functionality into a report called your invoice exceptions report or your operational exceptions report. That gives you the ability to track every functionality even if your employee has the ability to do so. So now let's start going through some of these permissions here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Y on my keyboard and then tap. How I'm doing this is I'm highlighting this with my finger and then hitting Y. I can do the same thing for invoice price changes, hit Y. Then I can hit tab to move on to the next functionality. And I'm going to do that for all these here so I can fly through these functionalities to show you how this works. And I'm going to now move over to page number two. Again, you do want to make sure that you go through these functionalities because maybe there are some functionalities here that you do not want your employees to do. But for me, I'm going to enable everything so I can show you how everything works. I don't get prompted for any passwords. And again, all I'm doing is I'm highlighting the functionality with my finger, hitting Y, then tab, Y, tab, Y, tab. Now, once you are comfortable with the settings you have set for an employee, you can always hit the duplicate button at the bottom of the screen. This will keep all of the settings in place, and the only fields you have to change is the employee ID, password, and display name. Let's continue working on these uh, permissions. I really don't have to worry about restaurant. But I like to set everything to yes. So I have everything set to yes for my employee. So this way I won't get prompted for anything in the software. Now I'll hit save at the bottom of the screen. Your employee has been added. Would you like to add another employee? I'm going to say no for now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my drop down arrow and pull back up my employee. Drop down arrow. There's the ID that I created. One, two, three, four. And there I am. 
So now let's continue uh, going through these tabs in the middle of the screen here. We also have personal information if I want to store that for my employee. I also have job codes and wages. I like to program this as their entitlement of what they do in your establishment. So you can have a cashier, maybe you have a driver for your deliveries, uh, maybe you have somebody that's just making pizza boxes. Right? These are different job codes that you could assign in the software and have them clock in and select that position when they clock in. In order to set this up, we must navigate to job code setup at the bottom of the screen here. Job code setup. And in here, you'll notice I have a couple job codes created. I have one created driver, manager, and server. Now, when creating a driver, you must make sure that you have enabled with delivery tracking. This is how they show up in delivery tracking when doing deliveries. You also have the ability to set default wage, default overtime wage, and a ship report. The ship report will automatically print. This ship report will include all department totals and itemized credit card transactions. You'll notice that the settings are different for each job code. So now let's exit out of here and assign these job codes to this employee. So when I log in with this employee, it'll make me select my position of where I'm working. So add employee or add to this employee. And we're going to select driver. Hourly wage is $5. Overtime wage is 8 And we'll continue to add manager. You could add multiple job codes to an employee. Because let's say you have a superstar and they can do it all. So add. And then the last one, server. So now this employee has the ability to work as a server, the manager, or as a driver. So now let's hit save changes. Let's exit out of here and clock in with this employee. Let's exit out of here. Now let's exit to our login screen. Now let's clock in with this employee. Blue and white time clock. We're going to type in the password, which is 1234. 1234. Enter. And the ID is also 1234. 1234. Enter. Now I'm going to hit clock in. As you can see, it now makes me select my position of where I'm working. Let's say I'm working as a server. It's going to make me enter my drawer start, which is $100. Hit OK to that. Are you sure your starting amount is $100? Yes, I am. And now it's going to make me select the section of where I'm working, either the front counter or the dining room. Now I clocked in as a server, so let's say I'm working in the dining room. Now I'll hit done. And when I log in with this employee, it will now default me to my section, dining room. So 1, 2, 3, 4, enter. 1, 2, 3, 4, enter. And as you can see, it's defaulting me to my dining room. Even though it defaults me to my dining room, I still have the ability to work in the front counter. So now, let's navigate back to our employee maintenance screen and continue breaking down that screen. So now let's click on Options or your Manager screen. Number 5, Administrative. And letter F, Employee Maintenance. Let's also pull up the employee that we originally created. So drop down arrow and select 1234. It also notices 1001 in front of that, and that is the location ID. Pretty much, you don't have to pay attention to that at all, so just pay attention to the 1, 2, 3, 4, or the 4 digits that you create for that employee. Now the next tab we're going to move on to is Store Association. Store Association allows you to work, to work with more than one location. Basically, your database is on a secure website where every location is pulling and sending information in real time 30 minutes. Payroll Info allows you to export your payroll information to Payroll City, which makes payroll a little bit easier for the end user. Now, time clock management. This screen here shows you all the clock-ins that have been done for the day. Let's click on time clock management now. So as you can see, we've clocked in as a driver, and we've also clocked in as a server. We have the ability to adjust the start and the end time, but we must make sure that we clock out of the system first. So let's do that now. So we're going to exit out of here, exit out of our employee maintenance screen, and the other location of clocking in and out is under number one cashier, letter C, clock in, clock out. Let's type in one, two, three, four, enter, one, two, three, four, enter. And now we're going to clock out. Entering closing amount, we didn't bring any sales in, so it's still going to be $100. At this point, it's going to attempt to print a report. And that kicks me out to the front screen of the software. So now my next employee can log into the software. 
So now let's navigate back into employee maintenance by clicking manager. And by default, our password on top is admin. And the ID is 01. Now we can click on number five, administrative, letter F, employee maintenance. Now let's navigate to time clock management. So as you can see here, it shows us that we worked for 13 minutes and we only earned a dollar and eight cents for our wages. Now, being that this employee is clocked out, we now have the ability to go back and to adjust this time to whatever we want. But if they're only clocked in, then you do not have that ability. Only a manager can make these changes. Let's say I want to go back and change this to 8 a.m. You'll notice that the time is now going to go up to 193 minutes, and now we've earned $16.08 for our wages. Again, only a manager can make this change. You also have the ability to break down this uh, by all of your employees or individually. And you also have the ability to set a start date and end date. Now let's exit out of here. So now that we've added an employee into the system and gone through all of the permissions, the next thing I want to walk you through is how to add a customer into the software, because now we need our customers to purchase these products. So now let's click on number five, administrative, letter E, customer maintenance. Now this will be the screen where you add all of your customers into the software. The only required fields when adding a customer to the software is your customer number, first name, last name. Highly recommend storing the email address because the software has the ability to do mass email. When storing the customer number, I suggest doing their telephone number because that is the easiest way to pull them up if they lose an access card that you have assigned to them. On the lower right, this is where you come to assign an access card or swipe card. So when I hit my lookup button here, you'll notice I've ever, I already have a couple customers added into the software. Let's click on add a more now. So as you can see here, I have my first name, last name, and as I said, these are only the required fields. I mean, I would definitely suggest storing the email address because we have the ability to do mass email. Now below that, we have extended info, which allows you to store credit card information and personal driver's information. Account information, you have the ability to create two types of customers, either a standard customer or a layaway customer. Standard customer is a customer that you're billing to their account and then billing them a monthly statement. Layaway customers are paying off their balances in monthly or weekly installments. If you are shipping and billing to a customer, then you have the ability to store that information as well. History, any products this customer has ever purchased will be listed under their history. If there's any specific note for this customer, maybe they're allergic to something and you want to notate that in their account, then you have the ability to do so as well. Stores, as I said, allows you to work with multi-site location. So if you have more than one location, you would use the web portal solution. You would come in here to associate all of your different store locations. Let's go back to the general info tab. In the middle of the screen here, we have loyalty plan. The system, like I said in the beginning of the training, has the ability to work with loyalty plan and does not require a processor. Let's exit out of here and show you how loyalty plans work. To navigate to customer loyalty, we're going to click on setup number four, letter C, customer loyalty. You'll notice that we have two options here, loyalty incentive and loyalty plans. First, let's create the loyalty incentive and then apply the incentive to the plan. Loyalty incentives. All right, in here we currently have a loyalty incentive set up, but now let's add a new one to give you a breakdown of all the different incentives that we offer. So add. We have points reward, which allows you to redeem points for a discounted item. We also have uh, the points rewards. You can set the amount of points that are allowed to accumulate in order for them to receive the reward. And you can also mark if the, if the reward is uh, with tax or not. In most cases, points reward is what's most commonly used, but we also have birthday bonus, which allows you to give customer or a free discounted item for their birthday. Frequency discount gives a discount to a customer who shop at your location often. So let's say you have a customer that comes in every Friday and grabs a, grabs a pizza. You know, maybe on their 10th pie, you can give them uh, a free pie towards their next uh, purchase. All right. And we also have fire coupon, which allows you to create a coupon in the software and associate that coupon with the loyalty incentive. But in most cases, points and rewards is what's commonly used. Let's call this free voucher. And for the points, uh, for the points accumulated, let's say it's going to be five points, okay? Because we only need them to accumulate five points, or maybe 
maybe 10 points, whatever you want to have this set to. But it's just to quickly show you how it works, you know, we're going to accumulate five points. And this will trigger the reward. We're going to set the reward type to free voucher. The voucher value will be five dollars. So when they so when they reach their points, they're going to get a voucher for five dollars off their next purchase. So now let's hit save. Just to backtrack our steps, what we did was we set the voucher value for five dollars. We set the reward type to free voucher. We gave the reward five points to trigger, so we can get our reward. And then we have the reward type set to free voucher, which is points reward. Now let's hit save. Now let's exit out of here. We're going to click on number four, set up again. Let us see customer loyalty. And now loyalty plans. Now let's hit add at the bottom of the screen. And let's duplicate the incentive for the plan. So we're going to call this free voucher. And we're also going to mark this accumulate points. And now we're going to hit add incentive at the bottom of the screen here. So add incentive. And we're going to select free voucher. Now you have the ability to add multiple incentives to the plan. This is why you have exclusive, override, and prompt. You want to make sure that you do have prompt checked off here, so this way anybody that's associated with this loyalty plan will accumulate points. Now we can hit update. Now let's exit out of here and associate the free voucher with the customer. So now let's go to number five, administrative, customer maintenance, letter E. Now we're going to hit lookup, and we're going to look up Adam Mora. So now let's go to loyalty plan and we're going to select free voucher. Now let's hit update. You'll notice that my bonus points are at zero. So now let's go, go accumulate some points and show you how the loyalty plan works. Let's hit update one more time. And now let's exit out of here. Now there's two ways to accumulate points. You can earn points by setting points by the item. So let's navigate to number five administrative letter A inventory maintenance. And this is where you can set the amount of points the item is worth. Now let's exit out of here and show you the second method of accumulating points. And that's number four, setup. Letter G, setup screen. And invoice settings on your top right. Earn bonus points for dollars. This means if you spend $20, you're going to get 20 points. $50, 50 points. $100, 100 points. So now let's hit update here. And let's exit out of here. And let's log into the software, select that customer, and ring in some items and show you how the loyalty plan is going to work. So 01, we're going to log in with our admin ID. And our password is admin, A-D-M-I-N. And we're going to select Quick Tap. And now let's hit Look Up Customer to pull up our customer. So Adam Mora, there I am, selected on the bottom here. And let's ring up an item. So let's go to uh, a pizza. Let's just bring a regular plain cheese pizza in. All right, and we're just going to add no toppings on that, so we'll hit done. And now we'll hit pay. Now let's hit cash. And now we should have accumulated some points. So now we're hit OK. Would you like to print a receipt? I'll say no for now. And now let's go back into our quick tab. Again, this is the most fastest and efficient way of getting into our menu screen. And this time we're going to hit look up customer again, select the Adam Mora, and now shows you that I've earned six bonus points. So I'm actually one point over my incentive. I only have it set to five. So now when I bring my next item in, it should trigger the software, making me eligible for my reward. So now let's ring in something, uh, a quick uh, pizza again. And we'll say plain cheese again, one more time. And we're going to add no topping to that. And this time when we hit pay, it's going to flag us, letting us know that we're eligible for that reward. So let's hit pay. And there you go. Bonus available. Type points reward, bonus, free voucher. Would you like to apply this? Hit yes. Okay. And now what this is going to do is print a voucher after the receipt with a barcode on that receipt. So this way when you scan it on your next visit, it'll take $5 off of your transaction. So let's say cash. And that finalizes the sale. So let's hit OK to that. Now keep in mind, it's going to pretty much, we're going to accumulate the same amount of points, but every time you use the incentive, it deducts those points. But because the last transaction was the same amount, we're going to be back to six points again. So would you like to print a receipt? We'll say no to that. And we'll go back to the quick tab, pull up the customer. We should still be set to six points. So look up customer, Adam Mora, 
And now I'm actually set to one because of the point from the last transaction. So yes, that's right, seven points. And that's how customer loyalty works. Now the next thing that I want to show you is going to be your reporting screen. So let's navigate to manager, number five, administrative, letter L, reporting. Now in this screen we have over 80 reports. We're not going to cover all reports, but reports that are specific to your everyday needs. To the left here we have reports broken down by sales, inventory, customers, employees, restaurant, and rentals. The middle section here lists all the reports that are added into the software. To the right we have a start date and start time. You'll notice if you double click into the field, it pulls up an on-screen calendar. Same thing for the time frame. As you can see here on the top right, we also have a feature called Advanced Reporting. If you feel that none of these reports fit your needs, then you can use Advanced Reporting to create your own reports. It will require an enterprise license, and you need to have a background with SQL and Crystal Reporting. In the middle of the screen here, you'll notice we have certain criteria that breaks up these reports. And notice how these change when you select a different report. Now Invoice Tools Report, when you hit Display, this gives you three options. As I mentioned in the beginning of the training, when you do any voids in the system, this is where your voids are tracked and recorded, option number three. Let's hit number one to show you completed invoices. Might want to also backtrack a little so we have some information generated. And this is what the report's going to look like. You have your date and time, store ID, invoice number, customer number, cashier ID, payment method, total cost, total price, and the tax that you're using, along with the grand total and gross. On the top right here, we have export report. This allows you to export the report to multiple extensions. Any report that you're able to view in this fashion, you'll have the ability to export out of the system. A lot of these reports are self-explanatory just by the title of the report. But again, if you're uncertain with the report details, then highlight it and it gives you a brief description of what that report details. Next report we're going to talk about is going to be our detailed daily report. Detailed daily report closely resembles your end of day report. The only difference between the two is that you do not have the ability to break the end of day report down by cashier or station or set a start date and end date and enable certain options of the report. If you did not run your end of day for three days, it's going to run the report for all three of those days. And all these options are already defaulted on that report. If you ever feel that you have any discrepancies between your end of day and your detailed daily report, your best bet is to run both of those reports and compare them together. Usually, you will find that discrepancy. Next report I'm going to move on to is our de detailed department sales, also known as your product mix report. This will list all of your items broken down by all sales and by department with an overall readout what you sold out of that department. Again, you'll have the ability to export that report out of the system if need be. And these are all the extensions that you can export to. General hourly report, I like to use this report a couple ways. I don't have any information really generated in this database, so I just want to show you how this can work to your benefit. Alright, so in here it gives you a nice little breakdown. Okay, so it tells you what I've sold out of each department and the amount that was sold out of each department. But I'd also like to use this report for the, for the day. So let's say between the hours of 8 and 1. You know, I've only ran maybe $500, $500 worth of transactions. So I know that I don't need to have such a heavy staff. But between the hours of 1 and 5, we ran over $6,000 worth of sales. So I know at that time, I need to have a more hefty staff. So this is how you can use this report to your benefit. And of course, you have the ability to export this report if need be. Now, when I was talking about tracking the permissions of your employees, all right, that's the invoice exceptions report and your operational exceptions report. These are the two reports that will track every functionality that you have logged as exception. These two reports are very important. Flash report, great quick figure report for what it is. Let's hit display. This will give you a net sales, net sales tax, net sales not tax, exempt sales, liability items, taxes, gross sales, 
and all the tenders that you accept, the amount that you accepted. And of course, you can export if need be. Let's move on to our inventory reports. We have a list alphabetically and a list numerically. Same report, just one is a numerical format and one is an alphabetical format. When you hit display, this will give you a list of all of your items in inventory along with the current inventory value. The reports just based on your items by department, vendor listing, if you're tracking vendors in your system for ordering your different kind of items other than pizzas or your materials, our current value of your entire inventory, top seller items, top 10 seller items. Okay. We also have reports based on your customers if you're tracking your customers in the system. For phone and email listing, maybe you want to do a mass email to all of your customers. Now you can do a promotion out of the software by using the phone and email listing to send out all of those emails. And of course, we have reports based on your employees, so you can pay your employees accordingly. Server tips, hours and wages, all right? All these reports based on all of your employees. And of course, under restaurant, we have reports based on deliveries, if you're doing deliveries, if you're tracking ingredients for all of your items, server tips, and the number of people that have been served. Now let's exit out of here. And the next thing that I want to show you is going to be touchscreen configuration. So we're going to click on number four setup, letter J, touchscreen configuration. Now as you can see in the background, this is the same exact layout that we have in this screen here. We have our invoice list, departments on the left, items on the right, hot buttons on the bottom of the screen. And this is where you come to configure this screen. So at the bottom of the screen, like I said, we have over 16 buttons that occupy the screen, but over 45 different functionalities that you can set for these buttons. You must also make sure that the caption matches what you have the functionality set for. You also want to put a check mark and display this button. Let's go over to items and departments. Now items and departments allows you to color code your departments as you see here on the left. You could also position these buttons in any order just by dragging and dropping. You can also hide any of these departments along with the items that are in those departments just by unchecking this box at the bottom of the screen. This also allows you to set pictures for your buttons. So when you hit select, you can select your pictures folder and that'll show all the pictures you have on the system and you can select those pictures accordingly. You also have the ability to alphabetize all items in a specific department. And to color code is very easy. You would just hit select color at the bottom of the screen here. And if you don't like any of these colors, you can always hit define custom color. And this will give you the ability to create any color that you want. Now let's hit save and exit. And let's exit out of here. And now let's exit out one more time to show you those changes that we just did on screen. So let's exit out. And we'll go back in the quick tab. You'll notice that pizza is now in green. And I moved none all the way to the bottom. Now the last thing that I want to show you today is running your end of day report and backing up your database. Now let's click on manager first because I want to show you a setting to enable when running your end of day report. So number four, setup, letter G, setup screen, payment processing, other options. Now we have the ability to perform batch settlement on end of day. This means when you run your, your end of day, this will automatically settle your credit cards for you. Perform auto settlement, we have the ability to do that as well, but you must make sure that your processor supports this functionality. This will email you a notification when that settlement is completed. Now let's hit update here and show you the two locations where you can run your end of day report. So under number three, tools, letter O, end of day, that is the first location. The second location is on your login screen. So let's exit out of here, exit out of our menu screen, exit out of our table layout, and back to our login screen. Now let's click on file and end of day. Now as I mentioned, end of day and daily detailed daily report closely resemble each other. This is why they're close together. So again, if you feel that you have any discrepancies in these report, run both of these reports and compare them together. So now let's hit end of day and let's put in our password. By default, it's admin on the top and 01 at the bottom. Our expected deposit is 7926. Let's hit OK to that. 
Is this amount correct? Yes, it is. Close out complete. Your close out report is printing to your report. So now my settlement is completed and all my credit cards are now sent to my processor. So now I can now back up the database. Now the reason why I did it in that order is because of the prompt that we get when making a backup of our database. So click on File, Database Maintenance, Backup Database. Again, by default, your password is admin, and the ID is 01. Now, when backing up the database, my suggestion is to store the backup to a flash drive, external hard drive, or even off-site, such as Carbonite. Reason being is that if that system goes down for any reason, and you're saving those backups to that computer, we would be unable to retrieve that file. Now, making a backup is very, very important. Can't stress that enough. So please make sure that the end user is well aware of making a backup. I would suggest doing a backup after every end of day. So the prompt that we get on screen now is it is strongly recommended to make a credit card settlement before backing up the database. Have you settled your credit card transactions? Well, I just walked you through how to enable that option before bad settlement on end of day. So yes, we did do a credit card settlement. But let's say you didn't do your end of day. All right? You can still hit yes to this prompt to still make a backup of the database. But the reason why you get this prompt is because the software wants you to have the most recent financial information in that backup. So, God forbid your system does go down, you know, you have a backup with most recent financial information. And all we have to do now is just restore, restore the uh, database and you're back where you left off. So now let's say yes to this. And let's call the backup today's date, 2-28-2014. And I'm also going to give it a timestamp because I like to make multiple backups throughout the day. So I'm going to say 12 p.m. so I know exactly when that backup is from. So now I'll save it to my desktop because currently I do not have a flash drive or external hard drive connected. But later on when I connect my flash drive, all I have to do now is drag and drop. So now I'll hit save. It's going to take a couple seconds. And there you go. Our database has been successfully backed up. This now concludes our training on pizza. Hope everybody enjoyed the training. Have a great day.